Hi, my name is Beth and I'm a programming assistant for the St. Johns County Maine Library. And I'm so excited to be here at the Crisp Ellert Art Museum here located um, at 48 Sevilla Street here on um, the Flagler College campus in downtown St. Augustine. I'm going to be listening to a conversation between the museum's director, Julie Dickover, and Jacksonville-based artist, writer, curator, mother, um, activist, Shawana Brooks. Shawana kind of does a little bit of it all, so I'm so excited to be here um, to listen to their conversation about Shawana's work and about um, books and libraries, and I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Please stay tuned. After their conversation, I'm gonna make a few book recommendations, and I would like to thank the friends of the Maine Library St. Augustine for sponsoring this program. All right, well, I'm excited. Let's go inside. Hi, I'm Julie Dickover, and I'm the director here at the Chris Beller Art Museum at Flagler College. I am here with Shawana Brooks, who is a literary artist, curator, and arts and cultural developer in Jacksonville. Um, and we are excited to talk about the project she's been working on lately. Thank you so much, Julie, for having me. I'm excited to talk to everyone more about my work and what I do here in Jacksonville. So if you could talk to us a little bit about your own personal work as a writer um, and then how that informs what you do in the community with the arts community. Oh, you know, it's, it's such, I think, a, a, a pleasure to, you know, be encompassed and thinking about the literary arts as a whole, as an artist, um, where I definitely um, can be a poet at times, and you know, I like to be a bit of an essayist, um, and someone who also uses language in a, a very contemporary setting, like social media, um, in order to understand um, the enactment of empathy. So within my writing, um, I, it really is very personal. Um, <laughs> like most artists, you know, writers, I write what I know about, which is my own lived experience in life. And so I've kind of, you know, tried to use technology as this other kind of way to create this kind of special space for my artistic practice that doesn't always kind of um, have to just blend exactly with what I do as a curator or when I'm out in the community. So. Um, I, I, I love languages, but you know, English, of course, is the language that I'm <laughs> more masterful in. So that's what I really take in, into thinking about words and their meanings, and a lot of times even where they come from or how they're referenced, and maybe trying to um, disrupt them a bit and to use them in order to create a, a broader understanding of this lived experience, I think, you know, as a Black person, as a black woman, as a, as a mother, as a wife, as a business person, as this uh, entrepreneur and somebody who really has a, a great passion for the arts. Yeah, so I mean I first became aware of your writing when you would post your motherhood musings on your Facebook page. Um, and I always found them, you know, sort of a short form, but long form, I guess, for Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, but I always found it to be like a really interesting way to use a social media platform um, because it was a little more colloquial, not so academic, right. definitely like from a deep personal space. Um, but then, you know, you have those writings became the basis for an exhibition at Yellow House in Jacksonville that was co-organized by Hope McMath, who's the director there. Um, and what she did and what you did, which I think is really amazing, is to pair your work, your literary work, with the work of visual artists. And I think that that is a connection that 
seems for me um, very intuitive, but maybe not always for everybody, but could you talk a little bit maybe about that experience? Yeah, I mean, you know, and thank you again you know, for, for what you said about that project. Um, so uh, my mother put musing, uh, um, musings in general. I just, you know, I've always, um, my nickname is Musence, which is like muse and nuisance. Yeah. People like to say, you know, of course, I, I inspire ideas, but then I also don't let people like not continue with them. It's not just to be like sprinkle you and then you know you not go forward. And that's even within my own self, where poetry and prose um, sometimes has. Uh, these different rules of engagement uh, around how you, you know, really want to craft what you're trying to get out and how you can speak to it. And I've always kind of been really um, enamored by spoken word, um, as well as just, you know, um, literature, more minded poetry, and trying to take those two in together. As you said before, it's not just like this, um, this is when we're being more colloquial within that language, because I don't want to miss people from where they are. I don't always want to assume that they have the time or, you know, the understanding of all of these different words, you know, that's why we have like an underbridge dictionary, right? Yeah. And I can also say, you know, I love libraries. I spent a great deal of my childhood just being in them and finding different books of my interest and reading them, you know, and I always think about um, my kind of first experience with reading The Color Purple by Alice mm -hmm. Walker and the way that she craft those women and their stories and the way they speak and how just that kind of way of being very open um, and a little bit more bare down with the language helps so many people to come into it. So what I found, of course, in, in, in sharing and using um, became this bigger communal space where other people started also sharing their experiences and it got me thinking again how often we don't sometimes talk about these harder things, these life experiences that happen to a lot of different people and the loss um, of a child, uh, regardless of where you are within that you know, birthing or you know, post-birthing experience is something that isn't always given enough grace. So I really started to think about you know, how I could use my words and kind of pairing them in a way as these like picture books, right? Like when we're young, very much about literacy and, and language and art is the viewing of those both. When you think about like what we read to children, you're seeing like these, you know, beautiful words and you're taking time to then add a, a piece of, you know, visualization of art next to them. Where I think, you know, it's what you don't often see um, within major exhibitions, you know, um, internationally or nationally, it's just an exhibition that is just words. Every now and again, that's kind of like, not like a gimmick, but it might come yeah. into you know, fruition, and yeah, somebody is really doing something interesting, and normally it's how they kind of produce those words, or how they like maybe run them down the walls, you know, or something like that, and really make it more artistic, where I wanted people to really fully come in and want to read. My Motherhood Musing, August 12th, 2018. I didn't come into my pregnancy feeling like I was a mother, though I know that is certainly my designated role in this experience. Others had offered me the mantra saying, you are a mom from womb to tomb, and motherhood starts at conception. While I value those to be true, it just wasn't my internalization. I rear back a bit whenever someone says to me, how is mommy doing? Or how is mom? I think to myself, who's mommy? Yours? The title of mom just doesn't sync with my previous experience. Yeah. And hopefully seeing this visual image next to it, whether it was a direct reference of what that dialogue was about, or if it just had again some contextual value, I found to be um, a territory that I hadn't seen often. Yeah. There are sometimes where I see like, you know, like there are exhibitions where I've seen like poetry every now and again, and then you see like a piece of artwork, mm -hmm. but what I hadn't seen was just, yeah, like maybe like a short, you know, story or you right. know, some kind of stance that, you know, you, that gave you just as much attention and how it was presented mm -hmm. as next to the art piece, where yeah. sometimes again, the art piece does overtake that literary, you know, kind of momentum. So 
that was exciting for me. Um, and then to, to really make it about what was this huge, huge unexplored, I think, topic with, within arts, which is, you know, looking at what was going on around the nation, around um, black women losing their lives to just having, having a child or sometimes those children not living to be born. Where I thought, is this a way that I can use literary language and, you know, artistic visualization to, to stir some sustainable change. And so that was what really got us excited. But uh, of course, when I was working on this project and I had been working on it for like, you know, months, like literally, like before my child was born and then after my child was born because I got such, such attention from the community and there was a, a, a moment where we really felt like, again, like our child was like this um, community baby. Like there was so much investment in his development and and him going forth and, and us dealing with all of our challenges around my child was born a little bit early he was born like 13 weeks early we were at the NICU for like over 100 days and i just saw so much um and felt so much in that time that the best way for me to be able to keep myself together was to lean back on you know language and the literary arts for that expression yeah and it's a great exhibition that is actually up but not open because of the pandemic um, but there's a, a virtual version of it yeah. on the website yes um which is i think just yellow house yes you want in yellow house yeah, and i think there's a, there's a little slip where mm -hmm. you can find magic mirth mortality um you know musings on black motherhood so it, it was a great experience to use that kind of an art space like Yellow House that really looks at um, advocacy and language and literacy. And a lot of times with the exhibitions that they drive home, they also kind of uh, curate this collection of books that people can reference or come into the space and read. And I'm always really directed about that, how you know, like these two particular arts really service one another, yeah. how the visual and the literary arts can come together um, to, to, to be really communicative. So yeah. I was glad to explore that there um, and then look at ways that we'll be able to hopefully, you know, bring this into to other um, communities and, and counties or even hopefully bring it here soon to St. John's County. So that would yeah. be, you know, an amazing experience for people to really be able to see. And, and what's the experience behind people here where, where it changes? So we even look at um, the language of those communities to make sure that that's also imparted and what we do, because every community is going to respond to it differently mm -hmm. and need that to navigate it. Yeah, so um, for those of you out there, we have been working over the past few months and will continue <laughs> to work um, on bringing the exhibition Magic Mirth Mortality Musings on Black Motherhood to St. Augustine um, through a partnership with Flagler College and the Priscilla Art Museum, also the uh, St. Augustine Historic Society, the Lincolnville Museum, um, and so there's a lot of really wonderful collaborators, um, and we're working on that platform, and we'll post something about that soon. And we'll also link to the virtual exhibition in the notes here. Um, but I mean, you know, there's, I think there's a few interesting um, connections, the way you, I think, think about sort of language and visual arts, and um, how those two can sort of play off of one another. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Claudine Rankine, I think, is like a really also wonderful example of this. Yes. Um, with her book, Citizen, and her new book, Just Us, where she um, is writing predominantly sort of, you know, and I'm not, I'm not a literary <laughs> artist, I don't always know the terms, but I think like prose poetry is a lot of, uh, is maybe a way to describe her work, mm -hmm. um, but she often pairs her work is paired with um, works by other visual artists, sort of in the in the book form, which, um, you know, just the way you were describing what you do reminded me of those books and, and how I really loved that, to read one of her pieces and then to see it paired with a piece by a contemporary artist. Yeah. Um, and I think it, it like hits different parts of our brains, right? Um, the way we sort of react to the content of whatever it is that we're reading right. or whatever it is that we're seeing um, 
and makes us maybe understand issues more fully. I think that's you know a, a, a great retrospective in thinking of that kind of perspective because before we're able to read or write, um, if if you know you're born with these abilities, you can see you have sight, um, and, and and how you gravitate towards language through what you're seeing, you know, and that's very influenced by you know like by your parenthood and, and talking about that and then as you're trying to communicate more then you, you want this this literacy, right? But I think there's something so ingrained in us, as you said before, how it's activating these different parts of our brain that I always like to try to think that everybody doesn't enter um, into art in the same way um, mm -hmm. that, you know, luckily most people, you know, like general most people will try to deflect on knowing or understanding art. Uh, and they're like, you know, I'm not an artist or, you know, I don't, I don't know about that. Or, I don't know if I like it or I don't like it or not. I'm like, well, you still get to have, you can have some discourse around mm -hmm. it, regardless of where or how you feel about your own literacy, um, where there's, you know, that challenge within sometimes elitism and those spaces that can offer um, how we enter into art. And for the most part, you know, we're, we're all offered these opportunities to, to learn to read. And so I think, you know, this visual art and also this literate art really kind of helps to enforce that literacy. And where that's so important to communication because we often think like it's just like, you know, like how often have you just read a text, right? But you've read out of context of what that text is, you know. Maybe somebody didn't put, you know, the periods or the commas or the things, and so you're reading it in, in one way in a voice, and then they're like, oh, no, like, I meant it like this. And I think that often happens, too, when we pick up a book, you know, a book that doesn't always have the images. You're creating them, right? Like, you're making them in your mind as to what you feel is valued or what scenes you want to see or how you're, like, getting the characters to, like, walk through that. Um, but beyond that, in the end, even when you're communicating, are you comprehending? Yeah. And I think that's the most important thing of, of, of language and of literature. It's, it's not just getting it out or writing it. Like in the end, does somebody have the capacity to understand mm -hmm. that? And if you really do want to break down the wording, it's, you know, why again, it's like, how do, how do I use more conversational language into my own process and even when I do think of ways when I'm curating and putting something out there like what what is the the common denominator into how I can get more people to have their comprehension about this uh, artistic process yeah yeah that's great um I should also add that Shawana was the former curator of this space at the main branch of the Jacksonville Public Library. So this is also just like very near and dear to yes. your heart. Um, I love the library. <laughs> organizing um, a visual art space within a library um, and how those, those two function, you know, in the same space, right? Yes. Um, so what is maybe, well, <laughs> Not to put you on the spot, but, um, you know, what is maybe an example of a show that you curated um, that you really utilized the resources of the library? For? I love that you're asking this question. <laughs> um, and I will say, like, this is, this is definitely one of the things I miss um, about the, the tutorial practice and that kind of a public institution. Um, so, so often, and I, you know, this is even like before, I, I, I've always loved to include libraries in my visits if I go to a different, um, different city, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you would see how art, you know, especially, I would say more ingrained or, it, it, you know, more permanent art was introduced into those settings and you didn't always see kind of like this rotational yeah. um, exhibition space, but there were always a few that maybe had them. And, you know, just like any arts um, exhibition I would frequent or go to, regardless of whatever kind of bigger arts institution it was, what I always felt after I left is that I'm ready to learn more. Yeah. I want to know more. I want to understand this more. Like, I want to see who this person was influenced by. Maybe they said something in their artist statement that got me thinking. Or I'm like, oh, is there a book around this? Or how can I learn more about... Um, 
this artistic media. There was always me kind of thinking of that. And I remember very early on, um, so the maybe first exhibition where I really understood the library's role mm -hmm. and what it could do to create more space for the creatives in this community, but where it could really use its resources within an exhibition that we did called Keisha, um, a black female experience of identity and race. And there are all these books, you know, it's a library, right? Mm -hmm. And so you get like the fun of working at the main branches that you have great access to um, so many different books. So, you know, you got fiction, you got nonfiction, um, you have, like, you know, artistic books, you have, you know, books on civil rights, books on gender, you know. Mm -hmm. So I got very excited to work with the librarians because, you know, of course, not, not being one, but really appreciating what they bring into yeah. and their expert and knowledge, I'd be like, let's go talk to nonfiction. Like, let's tell them about what we're doing in the project, mm -hmm. or, you know, and let's see what books they give me. Right. Um, and I would do that with, like, every floor, like, you know, or every, like, kind of um, department head, and be like, hey, can you all pick out some books? And then we would put them down in the, um, in the actual exhibit. At first, it was kind of, not like an offset, but maybe we would just, you know, kind of pick out the right kind of fixture and put some mm -hmm. books in. But then I really started to make it a part of the way we did the exhibitions. So it was like you, you got, again, these phenomenal images that really got you thinking. But right next to it or in some space, we would have on a pedestal um, a book yeah. that we thought spoke to the bigger contextual value of maybe that piece, mm -hmm. of maybe that artist. And so you could understand more about like their process and creation. Maybe it was a book just about creating, or it could be a book about um, you know, uh, making, you know, uh, I just always got like, so they would see it, my eyes would light up. <laughs> Most of some people like, I'm this curator and I'm involved in the, you know, the visual artistry, but it was, it was those books to me that really sold it and, and showed that there are these ways to kind of inform yourself and to educate yourself mm -hmm. about what's going on. And then that also comes in from the program, mm -hmm. right? So you have this um, major opportunity to, to also have this space where work can be seen, but also to bring people into this space to be communal mm -hmm. and to really inform community and thinking of how uh, the exhibition, like again, like let's say like Keisha, like what we thought was incredible was to think of um, women and dance. And so we invited um, um, some contemporary partners who were really entranced in African dance and we did an intro to African dance class, oh, right? So yeah. it was a great opportunity for people to come in and learn and, and dance and again, be communal around that art and then still come over and then look at the exhibit and then of course leave with books. So right. that was a, a big return on investment. Of course I wanted that work to be centered, but I never lost value that we're in a public library, we're in a library. If, if that exhibition has done its job, then it's to create this greater want uh, of lifelong learning yeah and that's this is where the the books and you know that knowledge come in too you know so it's just it's just a wonderful experience to keep thinking of how we can grow beyond that and how things don't have to just be stylized one way or the other but really how do you introduce these two partners together yeah i agree I think that's a good place to stop. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks. It was Thank awesome. you so much, awesome. Julie. Good to talk to you. <laughs> thanks, everyone, for listening. Well, thank you so much, Shawana and Julie, for letting us listen in on your conversation. I wanted to mention some books that um, you, the viewer, might be interested in um, that the St. John's County Public Library System has in our collection. I'm standing here in front of the poetry section. We have a very large poetry section, um, and there's all kinds of books in here that you might be interested in. Um, but I also wanted to mention some novels because sometimes um, we just connect with other people's stories, fictional stories. Um, so one book is Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadina. Um, Bernadine Evaristo. Um, this book won the Booker Prize in 2019 and it's a fabulous story. It's a 12 different um, lives of women living in Britain um, today and kind of dealing with the consequences of um, colonialism and um, I don't want to give too much away. It's a really great story. Another book that you might enjoy 
is um, An American Marriage by Tayari Jones. This is about a, a young black couple. Um, the woman is an artist and um, they're happily married and then they are um, ripped apart by some pretty awful circumstances. Um, so it's how they navigate those circumstances and it, it, this is another great book. Um, so two others that you might enjoy are The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett and Queenie by Candace Cordy Williams. But the St. John's County Public Library System has all kinds of books. Like I said, I'm here in the poetry section. We have books on art and motherhood and all kinds of books. So if you have any questions, just ask anybody at your local library. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I had a lot of fun and learned a lot and I'm excited to hopefully get to see Shawana's work here at the Crisp Ellert Art Museum in the future. Thanks so much for joining us and we hope we see you at the library very soon. Bye-bye.